Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and welcome back to another episode of Mod Chat. For those who do not know, this is a podcast I do where I cover a lot of topics that I see that I find interesting, cool, maybe do a little bit of show and tell, talk about them, show you all a few things, and we have a discussion in the world of video game modding, video game console modding, and just things that are similar to that. It is available in two different forms. First of all, it is available in a video visual form here in the Mr. Mario 2011 YouTube, Brumble, and Odyssey channels. However, it is also available in an audio-only form like an actual podcast. So that way you can take it around and listen to it wherever the hell you want to, audio-only, like an actual podcast. Either way, I like to cover things that I find interesting and new developments in the world of game console modding and video game modding in general, and while as I don't consider this a new show, some people do consume it as a new show, and to me it doesn't really matter how you consume it as long as you enjoy it. But either way, in here, this is going to be a special Xbox-centric episode, and really just covering one topic here, because this is for a exploit for the Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles, uh, which is currently out right now, although there's just a proof of concept, but there are some steps to get it set up and also hopefully keep it. But I also wanted to cover some news in regards to this and cover a few other things because I just want to say this is not what everyone is thinking it would be, and I'm hoping to dispel some of that before people get too excited. It is exciting news, mind you, exciting enough that I'm really just doing a direct capture and I even pulled out my Xbox One X for this here, not doing this on video or really just keeping this to the actual actual product itself, I guess you can say. However, before people get too excited, let's just go ahead and taper some expectations. So what I'm talking about here is over on the Xbox One research blog, a news recap here where they're stating, notice for users who would like code execution in system OS in the future, compatible with Xbox One, S and X, Series S and X. On June 8th, 2024, a method for gaining user and kernel level code execution system OS was announced. It is likely to be patched soon in next system update. To prepare, do the following, and there's some steps in which you can prepare for this here. Now, this is exciting because the Xbox One originally came out in 2013, and people have been waiting for some kind of exploit for this. We do have dev mode, but we really haven't been able to exploit the Xbox One in any meaningful way for the most part because it has been so secure, and the Xbox Series consoles run on the same OS and such, that the Xbox One does. So that's going to be equally as secure in many ways, and I would say the series would actually be more secure. But this here is, as it says here, user and kernel level execution in system OS. And I'm saying that very specifically because do keep in mind, when the Xbox One was announced all the way back in E3, they did say that it had three operating systems, and that was not just marketing fluff. There's actually three operating systems in the Xbox One and Xbox series of consoles. So this is System OS here that is going to have kernel level execution. But for people who are thinking this is going to be the same as the PlayStation 4 running Gold Hen, or the PlayStation 5 jailbreak, or even a custom firmware compatible PS3, or even some people might say, hey, if this is, you know, anything even similar to PS3 Hen, I'll take it. It's definitely not going to be that, and that's what we're going to discuss. And again, I do actually want to kind of give this little shout out here. Here because there's not too much information you can find on this anymore. For how long people have been waiting, the last time I can remember any kind of meaningful exploit for the Xbox series of consoles was back in 2017 here where there was a Edge browser exploit. And you can run it on a very specific system OS version right here, you know, built back in 2016. And it was essentially, you'd have to host this exploit itself, go to a web page, and then you'd be able to escape the Edge browser. However, this didn't really go anywhere for a multitude of reasons. One being that it was patched pretty quickly, uh, because this was not just for the Xbox, this was for the Edge browser itself. So it was patched pretty quickly. You had to be on an older specific system OS version, so you needed a console that hadn't been updated for a long time, especially now we're in 2024 when we're recording this. And on top of that, I, I might be butchering this a little bit, but bear with me here. As I understand it, one reason why the Xbox One and Xbox Series are so secure is 
is because all of the applications, including the you know media apps, uh, games as well too, uh, they all run in their own sandboxes, and they all are pretty much containered off. They're just sandboxed off from each other. So the problem with this is that with the Edge exploit, you could essentially run this code to escape Edge, but you couldn't go anywhere after that. You couldn't, you know, start poking at other applications. You couldn't dump games. You couldn't do anything else because everything else was sandboxed. So although it was impressive to see, uh, you really couldn't do anything else with it. And I'm just highlighting this here because, again, we really haven't seen anything really meaningful like in terms of like this uh, since 2017 that you could actually like run on your system now discussing this here taurus over on twitter had said people don't read the wiki summary and are starting to speculate so time to reduce your expectations next week quote unquote user and kernel level execution in system os by carrot c4k3 go follow her could i pirate games no but you will be able to combine this with the dumplings hack so yeah, this will open the doors to decrypting games and also editing save games, customizing the home menu, and running limited homebrew, one CPU core, but nothing directly nor easy to use custom firmware at the moment. Only the exploit is coming next week. And Emma, otherwise known as Carrot Cake or C4K, I guess, yeah, Carrot Cake there, they also had a pretty big thread on Twitter here explaining this, saying, some info about the Xbox hacking news that is starting to be shared because I want to make sure everyone's expectations are set appropriately. My goal is to release, probably early next month, an exploit for Xbox One series consoles, which will allow full kernel read write in System OS. This is not a jailbreak. System OS is the virtual machine where apps run. It's the environment you get control over when you enable dev mode on your console. This exploit will allow full control over this VM homebrew on retail consoles without dev mode. It will not allow piracy. The exploit consists of two pieces, a user mode part which gains native code execution in the context of a UWP store app. I've posted a proof of concept here which demos mapping and executing new code using this app's language. Once user mode code execution has been achieved, the second part starts, which is to exploit the kernel. This part uses a kernel vulnerability to achieve arbitrary kernel read write and elevate the process's privileges. Full transparency, this part isn't done yet. I have exploited this bug on standard Windows from medium ill, but the environment where we get user mode code execution here is a UWP app, which is more locked down. I have proof of concepted the kernel bug from UWP on Xbox to verify it is accessible, but the difficulty at the moment is Kasler. My medium ill exploit is reliant on the classic NT query system information leaks, which are not available to UWP apps, so I'm being forced to work around this. Loyal readers of exploits for sale will recognize this as a difficulty I discussed in the last post when attempting to exploit 24H2 Insider Preview and solved using a timing side channel. My current plan is to do the same here, but Xbox is AMD and I only really got the side channel reliable on Intel, so I have lots of timing and number crunching ahead of me. Anyway, that's the status of things. Hopefully, I will have an exploit to share with everyone. If you'd like to play around with this, then I recommend updating a console to the latest dash downloading the game script, running it, and taking the console offline. Also, if anyone has a UWP Castler bypass they want to give me, that would be greatly appreciated. So there's a lot there, but this really dispels that this is not going to be game piracy. This is going to be incredibly limited, and this is also going to be something that you kind of need to get into right now. I'm going to try to upload this episode as soon as I can, but that's also to say by the time you're watching this, this could be patched as well too, because they're saying right now at the time of recording this, so this was originally released June 8th, June 9th was fine, right now it is June 10th um, when I plan to release this and such. Right now while I'm doing everything, if you update your system to the latest version and take it offline, you should be okay, that should be exploitable. But for example, next week if you try to update, you're probably going to be out of that. And unfortunately, unlike some consoles such as the PS4, the PS5, even the Xbox 360, you can't really update to a very specific dashboard version on the Xbox One and Xbox series. 
but even if you do, you still need online access for not only the out-of-box experience, the setup, you need an account, but you also need to download a specific application and you need to run it at least one time before you take the system offline. Uh, that's all to say, unfortunately, since there's different versions and all that, and this is still pretty new, I don't have the exact build numbers, unfortunately, for the dashboard or system OS that you're going to be running on here, depending on your version. I know at least my own Xbox One X is ready to go with this, uh, but this is going to be entirely timing based here. And there was also a mention of dumplings or Durango dumplings. Uh, this is a blog post from about a month ago here, and this essentially allows you to, well, be able to dump games from a retail Xbox One or Xbox Series console. Uh, however, it does state here that after achieving code execution on the Xbox and retail mode on a very specific system OS and utilizing this CVE for a kernel read-write primitive, there was a brief period where attempts to extract retail game data failed while in the system VM. Uh, however, now this is possible, so they are saying that if you have an exploitable Xbox setup, taken offline, ready to go, any apps that you have on there, you could be able to not only dump them, but even decrypt them, which is big because these apps are, again, encrypted by default. So that is a lot to take in here, and that's all to say that this is not going to be for everyone. If you're expecting a PS3 or PS4 or even PS5 modified type experience, that is not what this is here. And if you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go and buy an Xbox One or Xbox Series and have it shipped, uh, well, time is really going to be your enemy right here. The biggest thing is going to be if you have an Xbox One or an Xbox Series right now, grab it, update it, and then do the steps to take it offline and do the needful. And with that here, if you are wanting to get that set up, I'll actually be able to show you. Right here, as I said, I have a Xbox One X that I end up pulling out of my storage. I got it set up and ready to roll. On June 9th, 2024, I did run the latest system software update on here, and then I did the rest of the steps, which I'll go ahead and show you. In order to do this, you will need to first make sure your gamer tag is on the system, you've done the out-of-box experience, you've done all of that here, and you are on an exploitable firmware version. Again, if you're going to be doing this in the future, in let's say like July or August or even September of this year or in the future, this is probably going to be too late for you. However, what we're going to do is now go through the rest of the steps on that news recap. So again, you will need that gamer tag on your system. You will need to be set up when this is all live and exploitable. Then you'll need to come up to your settings, go down to account, go down to sign in security and pin. And when you are here, you're going to need to change your sign in preferences. So go to change my sign in and security preferences and need to set this to no barriers. Once that is set up, you should be good to continue on, so that way you don't need a password on your account when you sign in. The next thing you need to do is you must set this console to your home console. So we're going to go back, we're going to come back over to General, we're going to go to Personalization, and I just love how they always change where this is at, because I wouldn't think this is where it would be. I just, I, I, I don't really like the Xbox after the 360, I'm going to be honest. But we go to Personalization, you go down to my home Xbox and you must set this Xbox as your home Xbox. Now do keep in mind, you have five switches per year. So as you can see, I've switched it a couple times, but this system must be your home Xbox. Next up, there is going to be an application you need to download called GameScript, which is, well, quite literally a game script. I'm going to have it linked down below in the description of this video. This is what it should be. Uh, no guarantees that it's still going to be up at the time you are watching this. However, this is hopefully easy enough where you can go, click on it, download it, and get it sent over to your console. If you're over on the Xbox console, open up the Microsoft Store itself, go to Search, and the game you're going to be looking for is quite literally called Game Script. So you're just going to need to, again, look this up and find it. Once you see it right here, navigate over to Game Script. And as you can see, I already have it here, but you're going to need to download it, install it. And then this is important, you need to run it at least one time. So you're going to launch the app and it should look something like this. Once you have run that one time, you can then close out of this application. And now once you have done all of that, you now need to take your console offline. Do keep in mind as well too, if you want any chance of playing with any of your games in terms of dumping them, decrypting them, messing around with any of the assets there, game save modding, it'd be recommended to go ahead and download and install and update the games that you want to right now, because we're now going to take the console offline. 
So in order to do that, you will need to come back up here over to settings, go over to general, go into network settings. And once you're in network settings, you're going to need to go over to the advanced settings here. And it would be recommended to change your DNS settings. So go to your DNS settings and inside of here, change this to manual. And then you're going to set this to the local host or something that is going to block everything. But if you set this to the local host address, you should still be okay. That's going to be 127.0.0.1. You can hit next. And even for the secondary DNS, you can do the same thing. So you're essentially just going to send everything back home. Once that's done, hit start and your DNS should show up as 127.0.0.1. This here, again, is going to be easy enough to run and set up. However, if you have your own preferred DNS that is going to block the traffic, you can set it to that as well. Hit back, and it's going to take some time to check the connection here. Just let it do its thing, and it's probably going to take a while because it's not going to be able to connect properly, but that is intentional. Once you're able to back out of there, the last thing that you'll need to do is set your Xbox offline. This is going to be important, so that way, not only you've blocked the traffic, but we're going to take the system offline. It is also worth noting as a final, final step here, like I said, you're going to want to install any games, any applications you might want to mess with in the future. But on top of that, you're also going to want to run them at least one time each. That way you have your licenses for those applications cached offline. If you have to take off the local host temporarily, go ahead and set your DNS back to automatic. But if you're all ready to continue to take this offline, you can go back to your network settings. And once you're inside of here, go over to go offline and tap the A button. And there you go, your system has now been sentenced offline, but it should be prepared, you should be good to go, and you should be able to continue on with the next steps as more things come out in regards to this. And if you're wondering what that'll be, it'll be step six, which is get a device microcontroller that can simulate a keyboard, rubber ducky or similar. Otherwise, you have to type a lot manually because there are going to be some scripts. There is one out there that you can run as a proof of concept. And as long as it returns a 1337 in the game script application, that means that your console is exploitable. However, unless you want to type everything manually, you could use something such as, I believe there's something for the Pico where you can kind of set it to automate and run a script from a keyboard type device. Or if you have a Flipper Zero, the same thing. Really, if you don't know what a rubber ducky is, this is just a USB device that will allow you to hook up to a computer, or in this case, an Xbox, and it will simulate a keyboard in that regard. It will do a few things, it will run a script, do whatever it needs to on there. However, the nice thing is with step six, as long as you get steps one through five completed, you can accomplish step six at any time. You can wait a month, you can wait a year to do this here, as long as you have the hardware and you have these other steps completed, which is what we just did. Either way, I will say here, recapping this, it is apparent that this is not going to be for everyone. And there are some people who have gotten really, really excited and they said, hey, I just bought an Xbox, I'm going to have it get shipped and everything here. One, it might be too late by the time you receive that console, and two, like I said, if you're expecting something such as like a PlayStation 3 or PS4 or Vita type modded experience, that's not where you're going to be getting here. But if this is something that you want to mess around with, tamper around with, do some fun stuff here, uh, you're going to have to do this here sooner rather than later. So really these steps are going to be preparing your system, getting it taken offline, and then just waiting for the future developments to come out. Because this is going to get patched in an update here extremely soon. Either way, that is about it for this episode of Mod Chat. If you enjoyed this episode, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. However, one thing I like to do at the end of these episodes is I like to pick a keyword or a key phrase. And if you use that keyword or key phrase in a comment on the video upload, I'll know that you made it to the end. So for this here, how about escape? Are you trying to escape the ecosystem on the Xbox? Are you trying to mess around and escape system OS here? Are you trying to escape a sandbox? Let me know. If you use the word escape in your comment on the video upload, I'll know that you made it to the end of this episode. Either way, that is about it for this bit shorter episode of Mod Chat. This is Mr. Mario, signing off for real this time. Thank you all for listening and watching, everyone. Until next time.